We are vastly superior to humans. You know it to be true so do not resist us. Coming to you live via take delayed basis by means of digital distribution. This is extreme hardcore nerds. Here are your hosts. Look over there. Riding into town to save the day once again. It's time to round up your pulls and ride to the comic store. Here is your Extreme Hard Corners Weekly Comics Report. And welcome back. And it is that time where we talk comics. We talk everything comics. We talk nothing but comics. And it's also that time where I turn it over to our resident comic nerd himself, Gunnar Sipper, as he brings us all the news from pages and panels throughout the week. So, with all that, Gunnar, what is new in the world of comics this week? Well, let's start off with the biggest and the best of the news. If you've been waiting for DC to announce when you'll be able to get their trades of the new 52, you may have to wait anywhere between May and November. Well, I just like that I've, I'm, I went through the list and I'm like, okay, they have it, at least the ones that I'm interested in, they have it spaced out enough where, you know, it's like one, maybe two books a month. It's it's not like I have one month where there's nothing, and then the next month I'm, like, spending $300. We, I mean, yeah, it's nice. Um, I, I just think they could have spaced it maybe a little bit better, so you're not waiting almost a year after it came out. Oh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with that. Um, you can also tell which ones they actually care about, because they'll be in hardcover instead of the ones that are in trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah... I, oh, and Superman doesn't come out till November. Nice. Well, well, yeah, you, the, like the the Superman following the Superman series, but the Action Comics one comes out in August. Action. Yeah, it's <laughs> still not that great. So, and just... uh, will you be will you get those in hardcover, or are you gonna wait for those to go to trade back? Mm, uh, the Superman ones, since they're the first ones, I'll probably get in the hardcovers. Otherwise. Okay. Otherwise, I would probably, you know, more than likely wait on those. Um, the one I'm actually look as I'm looking through the list, I'm I'm really surprised and kind of sad it's not getting the hardcover treatment, especially since everybody hypes it up every month it comes out. Is Swamp Thing? Yeah. I I'm really surprised that that's only getting that's only going paperback, but. Whatever. At least I have the entire. Or at least I'll have the entire series or the, you know, have it collected. So it, it it will. That's a definite buy for me. For me, in June, I'm planning on picking up the. Uh, I, I I'm I'm thinking of getting the Static Shock one, just because that's going to be the one and only trade to really come out of that one. Um, see see it. it it's one of those where I'm sure I'll enjoy it. But I don't know if I even want to risk it, considering how bad it was. Especially leading in to our next news story. Uh, John Rosam, the former writer of Static Shock, gave a very intricate, detailed experience of working at DC and Static Shock on his blog. And what went wrong with the series. So... From what point of view, if you can summarize, what did he think went wrong? Everything. Absolutely everything. It was nothing the way he really wanted it. And uh, I can post this article too, and you can go look at the blog also, um, if you want to read the, his entire full thing. But when he went in there, he was a um, good friends with the original writer... Or in creator, um, okay. don't know his name off the top of my head, um, but anyways, the people he was working with was um, Harvey Richards and Scott McDaniel. Scott McDaniel was the one who was doing the artwork, I believe, and helping co-write. And then I believe Harvey Richards was the um, also his editor. And they basically thought, this is the way we got to do it, and there had to be combat on every page. 
and he uh, he talks about one instance where he <coughs> one of his one of his uh, scripts got rejected because for four pages there wasn't any explosions or anybody being punched. Nice. That's so. He says a... this. This was not the way it was supposed to be, and uh, that they just kind of they were trying to make it over, like make it big explosions, really fast pace, and the dialogue sucked. None of it made sense. Which we talked about how all of a sudden his mom's alive, and then there's like two of his sister, and then his arm gets cut off. Like none of this was making sense, and yeah, so. Yeah. If you're interested, it, it, you were following this one, mess. and you wanna, you, you want a reason for the chaos that ensued. It would be nice to get some explanation for how the hell any of these decisions even came together. Yeah. Well, my my really, I never really watched the TV show, so I mean, my <coughs> only my real only experience with Static Shock was reading through the New Fifty Two. And reading the first one, I was basically left scratching my head going, what the hell did I just read? Yeah. It so, does not set itself up well. And if that's coming from a new reader's perspective, I can only imagine what it's like for somebody who's actually experienced with the franchise. Oh, oh yeah. And it, it, was, it was even worse for me. It, it, it hurt so much more because I was just like, ah. Done. Uh-huh. <laughs> I don't blame you at all on that one, so. No. I'm amazed that it took at least five issues before they decided, uh, yeah, we're gonna drop this. <laughs> Around the third one, I was kind of like, uh, you guys are not going anywhere. You gotta give it a chance, man. You never know. Issue six might be the one to turn it around, and then everyone's just gonna be going, oh, man, they shouldn't have canceled it. Uh, nope. Nope. I, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you cannot resurrect this horse. It's it's dead. <laughs> I I have as much faith in this as I do of uh, Steve Jobs coming back and giving me the new iPhone. So no actually comment. really good. <laughs> actually really good. <laughs> <laughs> it just gotta uh, hit the reset button. <laughs> <laughs> Bum. Oh god. <laughs> uh speaking of more dead comics, Rob <laughs> <laughs> Rob Lee Field tweets about how Infinite is over done kaput. I was actually looking forward to this series taking off. I mean, I like Rob Liefeld's work. <laughs> um the and the fact that he's, he was going he was going to be with uh Robert working with Robert Kirkman. It was one oh, of those I wasn't going to say it this time. It's in my head. It won't ever go away. <laughs> I hate you and I hate them. <laughs> Kirkman! Oh, no, it's one of those that I was I was looking forward to this actually happening. It's it, it was kind of sad to hear that it that they couldn't put check ego at the door and get the job done. Yeah, those damn creative differences. <laughs> uh, AKA artist. He's touching my toys and doesn't want to share. No, it's my toys. I want to play with them. No, fuck you. Well, you just got the entire conversation. Presentation of what they said. Well, no, I was gonna say that was the actual conversation you got between George Lucas and Steven Spielberg when they were coming up with the last Indiana Jones movie. Gunner, buzzing. That sounded like me. I know. So basically, when everyone turns into a child after the age of 20-something, they all devolve into Garrett. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Garrett, you're now a pejorative. Every time someone has an argument or a hissy fit, it is having a Garrett. We can run with that. So. No problem. Uh, well, sometimes your comic dies. Sometimes people like Adam Hughes just tells you it's in a coma, like the All-Star Wonder Woman project. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I read this one, and I was just like, oh, man. I want this to come out so bad. Why? <laughs> Be okay, I All-Star Superman was awesome. All-Star Batman left a little bit to be desired, um, but it was it was still okay for what it was. 
I think All Star Wonder Woman could be pretty good, especially if they go with the you know with kind of the incarnation that they were playing with in All Star Batman. Um, but I yeah, uh, it, it's it's not gonna happen. I'm, <laughs> not gonna hold your breath. I'm not gonna hold my breath. Hmm. After what? This is four or five years now. Yeah, just about. And everything got rebooted and this and that and yeah, no, it's it's R.I.P. Just need to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So, moving on from dead things, living things. For those of you who have seen A New Hope time and time again, and you're just like, God, I just want a good Star Wars movie to come out. Well, you may have your chance with Star Wars Uncut, the director's cut, on YouTube. And if you don't know what this project is, it's where fans would record 15 seconds of a clip from A New Hope, and they string the whole thing together to make one of the biggest collaborations ever. The full two-hour, three-minute, and 53-second video is available on YouTube, and it's at least worth skipping through. You know, just give it a couple seconds, hop through the video if you don't want to sit and watch the whole thing. But if you have the the time, this is definitely something you want to watch all the way through. So go grab your popcorn. It's going to be a show. Thank you, T.O. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, speaking of which, I I heard the the probably the most vicious rumor, but I guarantee it's probably going to be true. Terrell Owens is going to is now starting his acting career with the next uh, with the American Re- Reunion. Who? Uh. I'm sorry. Terrell, what? Terrell Owens is starting his know acting. Who it is. <laughs> Okay, the guy who played football, who who is very brash about it and thought he was God's gift to everything, is going to be in American Reunion. <coughs> hit, hit, hit him and uh, Chad Ochocinco. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's a great stuff. Uh, yeah. That's all, right. all I had. <laughs> Moving on. is... Coming to the end. <laughs> Wait, it, so he's playing for the Alien Wranglers now? <laughs> yeah, he's playing in the oh. Arena Football League. Alan Wranglers. God damn it, Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that's what leaves you when you trust Wikipedia at times. <laughs> I think I'm going to keep changing it to Alien Wranglers. <laughs> That's a lot better team name. <laughs> so, well, moving on from football, back to things that matter in your life. Uh, How many of you have ever wanted to be Cyclops as a little kid? Well, now's your chance, Andy. <laughs> oh, yeah! The the Wolverine fan in the group, right away, I get called out to be Cyclops. <laughs> he totally wants to be Cyclops. That's what every Wolverine fan wants. Just can't well, be the other guy with the blaster eyes. Uh, for uh, about $50, there's a do-it-yourself instruction on how to build yourself some classic sunglasses that if you're, after you listen to this, just... Go ahead and take a look at the Facebook page. It will be posted on there. But I, I totally think I'm going to try this. I was going to say, I mean, I wouldn't mind trying it to, just to see if I could actually pull it off. I mean, if I wanted to do it one year. But, yeah, no, I'm definitely more... <laughs> I, well, I have I the leadership qualities. Wear and this will be it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So is that all you had for news this week? Uh, just about, just to wrap it up with two, three quick stories. Um, if you're a fan of Chew or Hitman, John Lehman and John McCrea will be teaming up with IDW to create a new Mars Attack series in June. Yes, the Tim Burton movie is now coming to comic book life. For those fans of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and you just can't wait to experience all you can, the Mall of America will be getting a ride 
based on Nickelodeon's upcoming TV show. Finally, and excuse for me to go back to Camp Snoopy. Ah, uh, last but Didn't not you get kicked least. out. No, it's just I haven't had a reason to go back to Camp Snoopy until now. <laughs> now there's a reason. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oni, how about that Oni <laughs> following in DC's footsteps and choosing bad logos? <laughs> I no comment. <laughs> so, are, are we all in complaint about the Oni logo now? <laughs> How many yep. here even read an Oni book? I have Me? Scott Pilgrim, thank you. D besides Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, besides. Hey, he, well, bo bo uh, he said, "Does anybody read an Oni book?" Continuously. Besides Scott Pilgrim. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> Can't say that I have, but now oh, that yeah. I have my Kindle Fire, now I have options. Uh, I only have one, but there was another one I was thinking about getting into, but I didn't like that it was in black and white, because... Black and white is yeah. not good enough for you? Nope. If it's not shiny the... in color, I can't understand. <laughs> Full color, get the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you it ain't that. real unless it's full color. <laughs> except for the killing joke. That's the only exception when black and white was okay. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, I have a couple more stories to add here. First off, if you ever wanted to smell like an Avenger, here's your chance. As Marvel is putting out a clone line with the upcoming Avengers movie. Mm. You, can ha you have... If you want to smell like Tony Stark, so... Uh, Alcoholic say, and arrogant. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say sweat, sweat and uh, scotch. Um, you can purchase the Mark 7 cologne. If you, want, if you want to smell like Captain America. <laughs> Old. <laughs> Stagnant. Stagnant and slightly racist. Okay. <laughs> Come on, keep them rolling. Uh, well, that that I was gonna say. Don't we already have that already in Old Spice? But. Oh yes, you'll have your option of that if you ever wanted to smell like a god. Hmm. Overly feminine look. Rainbow colored. <laughs> <laughs> he does okay. ride a rainbow bridge. He does. I can't argue that. Oh, uh, you have your chance of buying lightning. If you ever wanted to smell like the Hulk. Oh, come on. Everyone should be able to get their own version of this. Do I really need to, do I really need to patent that one down? Oh, uh, you can buy our, our amply named Smash. So... so Smashing. <laughs> Rather smashing indeed. Oh uh, so so yes, you have your you'll have your chance to buy the sense of the Avengers here coming up shortly. Ironically enough, I did not see any or er, one for Black Widow, so yeah, all the uh, like I said, I was that's I was because it was that. perfume. Yep, so none of the lady Marvel fans are will be able to get their smell on like the guys can. That's probably because they're all going to go get smashed. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh. Oh, l let's see. Also, as long as we're talking a little bit of Mar uh, Marvel news, Marvel has announced that they're actually coming to South by Southwest Film Festival this year, which is Wait. huge because it is the first time that a, um, that a comic book company has come to South by Southwest. Noteworthy. I, 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 was it? I thought... DC did it a year or two ago. Mm, well, according to their press release, they're the first comic book company to do it. So, that's what I'm going off of. I don't recall DC ever going to South by Southwest, but... but no, yeah, they will... Diddy did it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, really? Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, nope. DC did it in 2010 with DC Universe Online. 
Oh, okay. There you go. Itself. So Marvel's lying. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> Not for Marvel, Marvel to tune to its us. own horn. <laughs> oh, it so Marvel lies to its fans itself. to make itself feel better. Okay, I, I, I see where this train's going. Uh, uh, let's see. And then last but certainly not least, as far as the Mar Marvel news is considered. Well, we have one more story, but I'm saving that for the very end. Uh, Marvel has announced that they are going to be making two new all-age titles based off of their Disney XD shows, The Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and Ultimate Spider-Man. Fuck this <laughs> shit. <laughs> What's wrong, Gunner? What possible, what possible problem could you have with this? The fact that the fucking children's show is based off 160 issues of a comic book and <laughs> now they feel like they need to redo it with shittier artwork. Fuck you, Marvel. So good Gunner, Gunner, Gunner wild up and get mad at his own his own trade publication. It's, it really brings a warm, warm, warm glow to my heart. <laughs> uh. So, I hear the DC bandwagon's not doing too bad. Shut up! Oh <laughs> uh, well, there is a there's a little bit of <laughs> there's a little bit of DC news to cover this week. First off, for that bandwagon that may not be doing so well, well, they're going to try and save the world just like their characters. As DC Entertainment has launched, we can be heroes humanitarian fundraising campaign to help out with crises and all that fun stuff ha happening over in Africa. Yay! Wait, don't they have Blackwing for that? Hush. Ironically, uh, ironically, now looking back, I don't, th I don't recall seeing Blackwing in the poster. Or Batwing, sorry. Or Batwing, yeah, sorry. Hmm. So, and then probably, of course, the big story to come out of Marvel this week. Thank you, Jeff Johns. Captain Marvel is officially getting a name changed. He will now be known as Shazam. Is he currently How... writing Captain Marvel? I think so. Okay. So, I, I, I seriously thought Gunner would have taken like some kind of weird shine to this, and you know, just wanted to punch him in the eye since he has a, a huge, uh, a huge tiff with him about he, he's the only one in the entire DC universe that didn't have to rewrite his shit. <laughs> And now it's like, well, since I have to do that, I'm gonna rewrite someone else's shit. <laughs> I, I just, I don't. Okay, I don't, yes, uh, people know him. Uh, yes, people outside the comic book world know him as Shazam because that's what he said. That's what Billy says to turn into Captain Marvel. Marvel. Yes, I get that. But his name is Captain Fucking Marvel. It's not Shazam. You don't name a character after their catchphrase. Are you sure? Unless you're Cobra. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> uh, Somebody just got Rick rolled. Or, uh, or, 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 or Mumra. <laughs> Mumra! Oh, uh, uh, but I, 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 I don't know what the change is for. I really have yet to have anyone actually give me a confusion between Captain Marvel and Shazam. I, I don't know, does he just not, hey. does his name just not come up at all in, in his comics? Who are those people? What people? There you go, that, that, that's your confusing look right there. Uh. Who's it let the wear now? Never mind. Just trying to be a smart aleck. Okay. <laughs> oh, and then last but not least... As long as we're still beating the dead horse over at Marvel, we got the official synopsis this week of the Amazing Spider-Man film. As, and I quote here, The Amazing Spider-Man is a story of Peter Parker, an outcast high schooler who was abandoned by his parents as a boy, leaving him to be raised by his Uncle Ben and Aunt May, like most teenagers, Peter is trying to figure out who he is and how he got to be the person he is today. Peter is also finding finding his way with his first high school crush, Gwen Stacy. And together, they struggle with love, commitment, and secrets. 
As Piers discovers a mysterious briefcase belo that belonged to his father, he begins a quest to understand his parents' disappearance, leading him to Oscorp and a lab and the lab of Dr. Kurt Connors, his father's former partner. As Spider-Man is set on a collision course with Connors' alter ego, the Lizard, Peter will make life-altering choices to use his powers and shape his destiny to become a hero. Wow. Hmm. Uh, uh, I, I, I couldn't have found a better announcer voice myself. <laughs> uh, well, having read some Ultimate Spider-Man, there's some stuff in there that works, but there's still... How about the majority of it? Majority of it, no. <laughs> but I am in no way, shape, or form qualified to be able to comment on this one. Hey, so do, you I'm get, do you get uh, Uncle Ben's uh, speech by chance, or no? In this one? Mm, yeah. Uh, I'm sure they probably will, since Uncle Ben is, I think, going to have more of a role this time around. Yeah, he is... He's alive for a, a little bit longer in this one than, than like, or uh, well, I shouldn't other say ones. the other Spider-Man movies, but in other Spider-Man continuity, we'll put it that way. Ah, uh, I would have killed him off right away. <laughs> <laughs> We've already had it retold to us more than enough. We should know it by now. It should Ex be like a Superman origin. You don't need to, you don't need to read the first couple of comics. We all know what it is. Exactly. That's why I'm, I'm glad Man of Steel, they're literally like taking five minutes and okay, here's where he came from, bam, into the story. So, but surprisingly, we haven't heard from the Spider-Man fan of the group. <laughs> he's remaining elusively quiet. <laughs> or he's muted his mic. Just so he can't hear him breaking the furniture in his bedroom right now. It's not that bad. <laughs> that that that's that's after twenty minutes of fist pumping and possible screaming, but you know, <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> well, I mean, like I said, it 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 does follow the Ultimate Universe storyline a little bit, but I mean, I can definitely point out where they've changed a lot of stuff. Yep, sure it does. Already. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> Tell us your true feelings. <laughs> instead, of, instead of the dripping cynicism and sarcasm all over every word you say. I'm just going to sit here and watch. <laughs> and watch. Uh, uh, I, can only, I can only picture him in a fucking wife beater. <laughs> just quietly kind, contemplating. Full metal jacket. <laughs> loading so, loading so, that area of Thompson. So that means when this comes out in theaters, midnight showing, Gunner's gonna be there. <laughs> in full costume, <laughs> dangling hey, people you over the side. Saying? No, I am not. <laughs> Go away. I wish. Uh, hey, I would totally do it, and I would bring my web blasters with me and fill them up with water and spray random people in the audience like I did the last time. That was awesome. Someone just How have you not it? gone banned from everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you need guys like me to make the world go round. No, you don't. What? No, you no. don't. Yes. No. <laughs> Sorry, Andy. The world. It's about people like don't. Andrew. People like me can't come along and just fix things to make them so much better. If you didn't have guys like me to to vilify everything and be the guy who cuts in front of old ladies at the grocery store. Oh, God. This or... is <laughs> We'd have a nice place. Oh, uh, <laughs> the world would, the world would be no fun. True evil in himself. <laughs> you want to bring it up every moment. Oh, uh, no. I, oh, okay. I'm saving this one for off the air, but... That does bring this Extreme Hardcore Nerds podcast to a close for this week. We thank you very much for tuning in and listening. I have been, of course, your all-knowing exalted one himself, your king of kings, Big Daddy Cool, Andy Kruger. And along with me this week... Yeah, we dreary... didn't say our names right away, did we? Exactly, that's what made it so great. The dreary, tired, and still ever present, hidden in your shadows, Dark Reaper, Stephen Creighton. Next to me, though, is... 
Gunner. And right. <laughs> yes, end it. All right. <laughs> Peace, everyone. Jesus. Death to you all. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Extreme Hardcore Nerds. You will be joining us again next week for our next insightful episode, Kawabunga.